Today we're going to be talking about doing Airbnb investing in the gentrified neighborhoods of the Cleveland real estate market, folks. That's what we're doing. So if that sounds appealing to you, grab some popcorn, wipe the Cheeto dust off your face, put some pants on, and I guess you don't have to put any pants on. You can watch the show in your underwear. That's cool. I'm not wearing pants right now. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James, and today, today I'm working for an investor out of Florida. His name is Jose. What's up, Jose? We are talking about Airbnb investing in the gentrified neighborhoods of Cleveland, right? It's something that you've been pretty interested in, right? Gentrified, folks. Gentrified neighborhoods, the nice neighborhoods, the neighborhoods that were once not nice, now they are nice, okay? They were once low income. Now there's very expensive real estate in there, right? And Jose, one of the reasons for that, brother, and it's something that you and I have been working with on a lot of property analysis videos, is that tax abatement we have in Cleveland, the 15-year tax abatement, right? Uh, and recently you're right, trying to <clears throat> give me more criteria and more insight on what you want. And you're really hoping uh, to get a luxury Airbnb rental in one of these nice neighborhoods with the tax abatement, but you don't want to spend uh, more than like 300 350 Got to let you know, brother, that's pretty unlikely, right? Uh, we looked at some more expensive stuff, $500,000, $600,000 properties, and you're trying to stay under that uh, budget, right? That's cool. You can do that, but you're probably not getting the tax abatement, right? So you either got to increase your budget to get the tax abatement, or I'll get you one under your budget uh, without a tax abatement, which is what I happen to have done for you today. So let's jump into that right now. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh, my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back, folks. Now we are going to see how the sausage is made. Oh, boy, I actually had some sausage for dinner last night, then fixed it up with a little bit of leftover sausage for breakfast. Woo-wee, it was good. I don't know what that has to do with real estate because it doesn't have anything to do with real estate. But well, that's cool. You know what it has to do with real estate, though? The number analysis on this property. This is a very, very nice home. Very, very nice home. It's a, it's an older home that was completely renovated, right? Let's cruise through the photos, right? Beautiful, right? Absolutely beautiful. Uh, and by the way, this design that you're seeing here, this is starting to be uh, the new design, okay? For a while, when I got involved in real estate investing, uh, the neutral colors, right, the builder grade stuff and just like what you did, because you always got to do your stuff neutral, folks. Like that that pop that you love, right, that you think is super unique, that, that don't fly when you're an investor, right? Your job ain't to get something that like some people will love. Your job is to get something that the majority of people won't dislike, right? And that's why you stick with neutral colors. When I got in the game, uh, the color scheme was like cream, beige walls, white trim, right? And then we switched, right? It switched to agreeable gray was the biggest color uh, with the white trim. Now, uh, what we got going on is, and it was like a dark floor, right? Darker floor. Now, what we got going on is it's the white on white with a lighter floor, right? This is starting to take over. This is the new trend popping up. You see a mix between the grays and this, but this is, uh, this is cutting edge, okay? And uh, a lot of the black, you get a lot of black. Uh, fixtures and handles and stuff now, right? So crisp, clean, simplistic, right? Still uh, <clears throat> very much uh, beautiful. I, I, I happen to like the white on white better than the gray on white. Um, but it's, you know, this is what the folks want these days, right? And this is a beautiful looking thing right here, right? They crushed it. Look at this bathroom, dude. Damn. This beautiful bathroom, right? So we have just a beautiful, 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 beautiful home, right? Unfinished basement, not something that should really matter to your Airbnb guests. Now, 
Let's talk numbers. Let's talk the neighborhood. Let's talk strategy. Let's talk all the stuff we got to talk about, right? The address, 1415 West 77th, Cleveland, 44102. 289,900, right? And the address is probably the most important thing, right? Yeah, the house is nice, right? But this address is incredibly important, right? Because you don't want to do Airbnb vesting in Cleveland in like low income areas. That's that's tough. That's rough, right? You got to be in the hot spots, okay? The hot spots. Now, people talk <clears throat> about the resurgence of Cleveland and all the gentrification and all the things that are happening, but they're not talking about the entire area of Cleveland, right? They're talking about certain neighborhoods, one of which is Tremont, another one, Ohio City, right? And another one right here. No, two, actually. Edgewater and Detroit Shoreway. Boom. This is okay, but as you start to get down to here, this is what I call low income, right? Like this, this is all lower income, right? More or less, right? So we're in Detroit Shoreway and Edgewater, okay? That's where we want to be. You got to be in a happening area, right? Because I think Airbnb investing in the lower income neighborhoods, it's pretty risky. Now, we got a beautiful home, a big home. And we're in a good neighborhood, one of the gentrified neighborhoods. What do the numbers look like, right? Well, we should be able to rent this for three seventy-five a night on average, folks. Not every booking, right? The shorter bookings, you get higher. You get longer bookings. You do uh, the discounted pricing for longer stays, things of that nature. If we rented it every day at that price, it'd be eleven thousand six hundred twenty-five a month. But You'd have to be batshit crazy to believe you're going to rent your short-term rental 100% of the time. You absolutely will not. You're not going to rent it 90% of the time. You're not going to rent it 80% of the time. You're not going to rent it 70% of the time. We are looking at an average occupancy of 62%, right? So you got to factor in all of those costs, right? 38% vacancy, fees, cleaning, maintenance, my PM fee. You got your taxes. And one thing we should talk about is the taxes on this property, right? The current taxes on this sucker are 2,511, right? This is in a neighborhood where we're seeing a lot of new construction. And you know why we're seeing a lot of new construction? Because they're doing a tax abatement, a 15-year tax abatement on any new construction. And if you do like a full, full, like gut, like tear everything down and then rebuild it to green housing standards, uh, you could sometimes get it to qualify on a rehab, okay? This is not one of those, right? This is a rehab. Most of your older homes are not going to have the tax credit. It's mostly new construction. I talked to you earlier about gentrification. Why do you think these neighborhoods are gentrifying, folks? Because Cleveland wants them to, and they're paying investors like you to do it, right? But if you want the new construction homes that are going to end up looking just like this one, well, you got to pay over 400 400, 500, 600, right? Those are what those cost. And they will come with a tax abatement. This one will not, but we're saving, right? It's only listed at 289, right? So it's considerably cheaper, right? If this was a brand new build, we'd be looking at another at least $150,000, $200,000 on this thing, right? So you do have to pay the taxes. But seeing as this was a reno, right? They picked it up real cheap and then put a ton of money into it, right? So uh, these taxes, they're based on, that's what the current taxes are, right? But they're going to go up, right? Uh, if you go to HoltonWise.com, on our FAQ, we have an explanation of how taxes in Ohio work and when uh, they reassess properties. So if this gets reassessed uh, to a higher value, uh, it's going to go up, right? And on there, I have uh, an up-to-date list of the tax rates, right? So uh, when I you see these numbers, know that eventually you're going to probably be paying a little bit more in taxes because this is not one of the tax-abated homes. If you want one of those, you need to spend... 400 500 maybe three it's really hard honestly to get anything with the tax abatement under the 400k range right so you got to take the good with the bad right with this one i don't think we need to pay the full 289 it's been on the market for quite a while but it was actually on the market for a while and then it fell out like in and out of contract a couple times so i think we get a little discount but don't get too crazy right 289 a little too high i think we try to pick it up at 280 and of course we need no repairs right but we do have to furnish the sucker right 25k so it's three hundred five thousand dollar investment and how that breaks down is approximately 95k up front right because that's 70k for your down payment 25k for that furniture then we get mr lender there to kick in 210k with uh, my NOI projection, after you're spending approximately 
uh, freaking 85000 a year projected annualized income on this sucker, that's going to pencil out to a 46% cash-on-cash cash return if all the things go how they are planned. That, folks, is a great deal. And that, folks, is why when we do Airbnb investing in Cleveland, we target the high-end beautiful properties, right? You don't want to be one of those schmucks trying to just turn like some low-income Section 8 rental property into an Airbnb because you heard some video on the Internet that it's going to make sense. That's a terrible idea. You want to go with luxury, and you want to provide people the housing in the hot neighborhoods, man. Right there, Detroit Shoreway, Edgewater, downtown, all the spots where everyone is investing a ton of money to see these neighborhoods improve, to see that gentrification, to see all that awesome stuff. That's where you want to be. That's where you're going to make the most money. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.